Are you looking for a gentleman's folder that can fillet the competition? I am so excited to introduce to you the CRKT Crossbones designed by Jeff Park. This thing is unbelievable, honestly. For the CRKT as a company, for the design, it was one of the best pocket knives that I got to see and handle at SHOT Show. And honestly, put CRKT back on the map for me for pocket knives. Now you may notice if you followed the channel for a while that I don't have a CRKT playlist and I have very rarely ever reviewed a CRKT product. That's mainly been because in the past, they really haven't connected with me. The designs really haven't been there for me. A lot of the features that they've offered on the majority of their knives, like no option for tip up pocket carry. Um, you know, the, the materials for the most part have been mostly Chinese, cheaper, you know, in design, kind of clunky. And just in the past have not been something that I've been interested at all to either own, pay money for, or review on this channel. And when I went over to the CRKT booth at SHOT Show this year, not only did this knife, the crossbones, totally jump out at me as being so elegant, well designed, well thought out, and just standing out from the crowd, but many of their designs this year just totally jumped off the, the wall uh, at me. And, and that's really cool to see. So not only this knife, but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to, to reviewing several CRKT products this year. But this one, I believe, is like the cream of the crop that I've ever seen CRKT produce. And it's a great job that they picked up Jeff Park uh, because, man, if this and this is his first knife that we're going to be taking a look at. He was willing to send this knife to me because I met him at SHOT Show. We talked. I said, dude, this is a rockin' blade. I love it. And he was kind enough to send me one when they hit production and they began to be produced. So I am super stoked to show you what I have got out of this knife, what it has to offer, all of the features, the designs, and really what makes this for me stand out from the crowd is one of my favorite gentleman folders that I now own. So I'm really stoked to walk you guys through the crossbones. Let's go ahead, I'll quit blabbing about it and start digging into it and actually showing you why this stands out from the crowd and why I love it so much. Such a wicked, wicked blade. That's part of the huge reason why this knife gravitates to me. As uh, we've kind of been talking about, I mean, it just looks like a fillet knife. Has a little bit of a Japanese influence for sure. You know, with that sweep up and that tip coming up above the handle. Just makes it so cool looking and again, stand out from the crowd in most folders against most folders. This looks nothing like any folder that I have really reviewed as of yet. And we've reviewed all hundreds of pocket knives at this point uh, here at the channel. So let's go ahead and talk about the blade itself here. We have this satin finish on this OS 8 steel, 57 to 59 Rockwell. I love OS 8. Uh, it's a great steel for what it is. It's not a super steel by any means, but this is holding a good edge and uh, OS 8 is very easy to put an edge back on it. It's rather rust resistant. It's not as rust resistant as some of those other super steels out there like 154CM or VG10, but it's more rust resistant than some sort of high carbon. Now it's gonna start out back here at the spine of being 0.13 inches thick, which is rather stout, but tapers down rather quickly, but doesn't give us a super precise tip, which I appreciate. You know, it's not something that I'm worried about snapping off but still gives us plenty of penetration capability awesome belly and sweep up and that really narrow you know uh, design there is going to give us massive slicing capability with that full flat grind so just totally digging it the total length from tip to handle scales is three uh, 0.54 inches overall length, which is a great reach. And for how slim and lightweight the blade is, you're getting huge blade capability in the sense of how long it is. And then again, it, it just, guys, it, it is. It's gonna fillet cardboard, it's gonna fillet rope, um, it's gonna fillet you know food, anything like that that you would normally encounter packaging in your everyday life. And you know, God forbid, if you did have to use this in a last ditch effort, and I don't recommend doing that in hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, but uh, this would definitely cause some wicked penetration and wicked slicing wounds. So the, the blade shape just screams that profile and is very, very capable. It is not capable very much, in my opinion, out in the woods. This would not be a backpack or hiking folder. I wouldn't be wanting to do a lot of like whittling and carving just because of how short from spine to, uh, uh, excuse me, from spine to edge it is. Um, it's just more of uh, what I just already talked about, whereas like a wider, you know, um, like leaf shape designed blade 
something like the spider co would be something i would more prefer to take in the woods so just kind of keep that in consideration as well but it'd be great to uh food prep knife out you know camping or hiking or backpacking um but uh that's just my preference so guys blade amazing stand out from the crowd uh good os 8 steel and a huge performer for your edc tasks so let's discuss this handle here now the overall length on this handle is going to be 4.54 inches so just over four and a half inches overall length which is fantastic and uh, you can see there with the highlights of aluminum there that's going to give it its name the crossbones we see these little crossbone crosses on there if you will and then great kind of a, a gray texturing diamond plating inside that it's uh, detented lower than these crossbone crosses of that basically polished aluminum there and then we're going to have that on both sides again really nice just standoffs with the pivots and then the screws on the opposite side there and then inside here let's see if i can show you guys are steel liners so there are steel liners on the other side of the aluminum and so you may be thinking well how heavy is this thing awesomely light for how large the blade is and how big the handle is this is going to come in at 2.4 ounces so extremely lightweight i love that aspect of the knife i'm always looking for lightweight blades and this one is ultra light i would put it in the ultra light category so i'm going to get great texturing um, what we have here is just a slight raise of this uh, slight ramp with some good jimping right there not overly aggressive i don't like super aggressive jimping and then in conjunction with that thumb uh the finger flipper i have a really good good lock up and really good control over the knife and I never worry about coming up and sliding and hurting myself even in a uh, reverse you know um, self-defense role if that is how you're going to deploy it it's going to give you decent lock up um, you know there are other knives out there something again I'll just because we looked at it a little earlier the spider co you know I mean this is going to be more with this huge ramp and this deep sweep down here I'll be a little bit more locked in but not by much and again I look at this as a gentleman's folder but if you did have to use it in that capacity it could be done so uh, the ergonomics though are great not any sort of sharp angles or anything like that that hurt my hand these are abrupt and you know you can see all the machining and it, it makes it stand off in the crowd the handle is just so standoffish looks like a, a custom piece that's like you know five six hundred dollars um for being an under hundred dollar knife i mean it's just mind-blowing and kind of the the wide neck down into the middle and then flaring back out again it's just going to give you great grip i wear large size gloves you can see there it fits with plenty of room to spare out the back there we've got a nice standoff lanyard hole that does not bite into my hand or cause any problems they've really rounded it off and machined that well and the pocket clip doesn't bite into my hand either so a fantastic setup in my mind for the handle not making it only extremely um attractive but also uh very functional as an edc knife so let's go ahead and take a look at the deployment and the lockup. Now we have perfect centering, dead center, and I've had this now for about two months. EDC'd it very regularly on a consistent basis, no floating left or right. We have this nice flipper right here that isn't sharp or obnoxious. I hate the ones that are really high, you know, they look like a giant shark fin, or that are really angled sharply, has a little bit of jimping, just enough to get. And the awesome thing is that this has an IKBS ball bearing pivot system, so it's extremely smooth with a really good detent as well. So once you get past that initial detent, it just flies open because it's not on washer it's on ball bearings which is awesome so you're going to get great deployment and then finally here on the lockup we have a liner lock that's on the thin side but it hits there about 40 percent what you would expect you know similar thickness to like the spider co tenacious spider co um what's the word i'm looking for pole star that we've recently looked at and uh, is very good you know no wiggling wobbling left right up down solid lockup got just enough there to disengage and then close and again great detent there with that ball bearing system so i love the deployment really nice super fast with a great detent great pocket clip as well i really like it a lot we got a little bit of a duck bill here see-through so again it's showing as much off of this kind of uh, bronzed 
handle and uh, it does not protrude ob obnoxiously far. The lip is not obnoxious and gonna catch on things. It's really machined well. So again, it's not sharp or anything like that. And it's a deep ride loop over pocket clip. CRKT make more pocket clips like this. This is awesome. Good resistance, it's not gonna thrash your pocket though. And almost nothing is gonna be showing out the top. Now this is a righty only, tip up only. Now I love tip up. I'm so glad that this came with tip up. I would have been a lot less enthusiastic if it, if it was tip down. So I'm really glad for that. Nothing on the left hand side though. And this, because it has the finger flipper, I would have loved to see another notch here for you lefties out there to be able to just swap the pocket clip and uh, would love to see CRKT offer as many options as possible for lefties as well. And this is definitely a knife that could have had right or left um, carry. But for me being a righty, I don't have a problem with it at all. And I love it. I love it. Great pocket clip, no issues whatsoever. I'm going to give you a great deep ride. So let's go ahead and look at the price point here real quick. Now the price point on this knife is going to be around the $60 mark between 55, 60 bucks. Now for the aluminum, you know, machined, lots of work goes into the handle. Aus 8, which is, you know, decent, larger, you know, we got ball bearing pivots. So, I mean, we got some good higher end materials there and it's going to run right around the same price as another Aus 8 blade that is also a great slicer, but nowhere near as stylish, the full size SOG Aegis. So in the comparison of, you know, SOG products, other, um, you know, like cold steel Aus 8 products that are using Aus 8 as a material, it's right in there, right in the ballpark. Now, I'll always like to be honest with you guys. I will say that I think it's reasonable. I not only got this one from Jeff, but then uh, I purchased a second one because I liked it so much. So, I mean, it's a, a blade that I totally dig and I'm willing to lay down that about $55 to $60 price point. Now, you can get, say, like an S30V uh, Blur, USA made, for about 70 so $10 more. You can get the Sandvik USA made versions, which I say I would say is just about the same comparable steel composition um, for about the same price around 55 or 60 bucks. So just take that in consideration. It's not, you're not paying necessarily for any steel improvements. Aus 8 is well known on the market. You're paying more so for the aesthetic qualities as well as just fit and finish that you're getting on this knife, which I believe are high and it is comparable to what the market is producing. Now we will have links in the description below over to Amazon as soon as these are available on Amazon. That's a great way to help support the channel as well as to Blade HQ because uh, Blade HQ and those type of sites usually have it before Amazon does. But when you guys use the Amazon links, that helps us support the channel, continue to do what we do here. So if you are interested in the, those blades, this blade, uh, just go ahead and check out the links in the description below. Well, folks, there you have it can't say enough good things about this blade. If you're looking for lightweight gentleman folders that'll just fillet everything that it comes in contact with and uh, coming in at a decent price point for the materials, uh, I cannot recommend this blade enough to you. You will be so excited with it. It will stand out from the crowd of other folders in your collection and you will be pleased with what you get. So uh, again, I can't thank Jeff enough for not only just coming up with this design, because bro, this thing rocks, and thank you again for sending it to me, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, as well as being able to show you guys something that has now put CRKT back on the map for me. I have several other uh, of their products that are in the queue now that I have personally purchased with my own money so that we could test out and review, because there were several items now that I am interested in, where in years past, I've just haven't really cared to check anything out. So really stoked to see what CRKT KT is producing and uh, see what Jeff comes up with and new designs in the future and uh, what he can produce through CRKT. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for coming over here, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. I'll answer any questions that you may have in the comments below. Check us out on all the relevant social media as well. That's a great way to see what's up and coming. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.